Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is a follow-up to my 31 day kettlebell challenge video that I did at the start of January and I am happy to report that I have successfully completed the challenge without skipping a day. I am really happy that I did this, although there aren't any magical results, which of course anyone would want, but I think that what I gained and learned intrinsically has been and will continue to be more significant. This leads me to my next point. I will be breaking my results down into two parts, one, what I gained physically, and two, what I gained mentally. So let's get started. To recap really quickly, I had three main goals that I wanted to accomplish. One, build self-discipline through completing the whole 31 days. Two, get stronger and build endurance. And three, begin to master the form. And I can happily put a check mark next to all three. I do have to say, even though I have now done it daily for a whole month, I feel like I am still learning the form. Yes, it is better than from when I first started, but now I really see why it, like many other things, takes years to master. So let's start with the physical results of doing kettlebell swings every day for a whole month. I feel great, definitely better than from day one as you would expect. No injuries, so it's a win for me. I also was able to achieve both of my climbing related goals. I picked a move on the mood board at the beginning of the month that I was struggling with and couldn't complete. I wanted to not only be able to do it, but to do it as statically as possible. On day 31, I was able to make the move on my first attempt. I definitely felt my improved core strength allowed me to maintain tension and keep my hips closer to the wall. And I attribute this to the hip hinge from the kettlebell swing. My traverse time increased by 200%. I have noticed that my endurance has gone up and I attribute this to the aerobic component of the swing. I also logged my resting heart rate every day and there has been a decrease from the beginning of the month to now. So without getting too nerdy, my aerobic capacity has increased from doing 31 days of kettlebell swings. As a whole, I do feel like my climbing has improved over the last month, which I didn't really expect much being that all I did for training were the kettlebell swings. And apart from climbing, everything just feels better. At the start of this, I was dealing with upper back and neck pain. I was questioning doing this at one point. And not only did the kettlebell swings not make my injuries worse, they made them better, if not gone. After years of sitting in front of a computer and studying in all sorts of positions, my posture has taken a hit. Last year, I would sporadically experience strong neck pains and impingements in my back if I slightly overworked something while climbing. I believe that the kettlebell has strengthened my shoulders, back, and neck, which has helped to pull everything back so that my spine stacks better, and now I can climb without exacerbating any of those injuries. Moving on to the mental aspect. As I mentioned at the start, the greatest benefits for me have been mentally. A lot can be accomplished physically in a month. I've done that before. But what I didn't want was to repeat the cycle of inconsistency. I don't feel or look like my ideal vision yet. But I think part of growing and becoming better versions of ourselves is to constantly be reminded that no, we're not perfect, and real growth is not only hard and takes a really long time, but requires daily conscious effort. It's hard because it's meant to be. As they say, nothing great achieved comes easily. So being that I'm naturally very hard on myself and would have wanted more in any other situation, I think this mentality has stunted my potential growth in the past. One of the lessons that I gained is that it's all about the small victories. Nothing will ever be perfect or go exactly the way that you want it to. We will always keep getting knocked down. But as long as you keep repeating enough of the small victories, you'll eventually get closer to your goal and truly growing as a person, mentally and physically. So with that said, patience and being more kind to myself have been huge takeaways for me. Success is a series of small wins. I mentioned I want to be more consistent with training over a longer period of time rather than the typical let's go really hard for a couple of weeks and before you know it you're doing nothing for the same amount of time. There was no consistency in my training last year. 
And this time around, I think I'm at least in the right direction mentally, which I believe is even more important. I also said I wanted to create a healthy mindset for how I approach my health and fitness goals this year and the rest of my life. This is something that I've struggled with my whole life, like I think a lot of us have. And I think that's because I haven't had a healthy and sustainable approach if I'm honest with myself. It's going to take time to get there. I'm still learning, but again, at least I'm taking the right steps now. So there's kind of this common theme across much of what I'm saying. Progress isn't perfect nor constant, and mindset is so, so important for achieving any type of growth. I recently started reading this book on Zen practice, and it talks about the importance of always having a beginner's mind. This really stuck out to me, and I reflect on it daily as much as I can, doing my best to maintain that mindset. It sounds so simple, but I think it's something many of us forget about. And so I've seen this small detail impact my journey over the last month, even with this challenge. If we always maintain a true beginner's mind and take away the small victories, life will reward us. In the grand scheme of things, I still know nothing. And I think above all the physical and external gains lies the more rewarding benefits of mental growth. So for me, the greatest accomplishment has been to recognize and maintain this outlook that I'm always learning. Growth doesn't stop. And if I exercise that mental muscle, I will grow twofold. So I attribute everything that I've gained and learned to the approach I took with the kettlebell swings and how I went about the workout itself. And although it may not be evident initially how, I think it's also the cause for the mental growth. My protocol was adapted from Pavel's methodology. To keep it simple, I'm doing a hybrid of step and variable loading, but over a year's worth of time. I'm really taking baby steps and not forcing adaptation here. So I found my theoretical max effort, and because I did it daily, I did 50% of that to find my daily rep range. Again, because I did it daily, non-stop, I programmed in a 10 minute rest period in between sets and kept it down to only two sets. Remember, this is the first month to a year long training program. I'm not telling you my rep range because as you can see, it's different for everyone. If you're super confused at this point, I recommend watching my first video to this, read up on Pavel Tatsulin and listen to his podcast on Joe Rogan if you're up for some interesting knowledge. Point is, I truly believe this is what allowed me to, without any problem, do it every day without fail. It was sustainable. I didn't overdo it, and I think this is the healthy approach to compound onto over the year. So I think it did the job of priming both my body and my mind. So is the kettlebell swing a magic exercise? No, nothing truly is. But in my opinion, it's a highly underrated movement that I think is very rewarding and I will continue to do. I'm really happy and grateful that I did it, so much that I'm sticking with it. Possibly for a year? We'll see. That's it for this video. If there's anything I missed that you may have questions about, please let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and got something to take away from it, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.